In this video, we will look at the creation of bathroom. First of all, we should check units of measurement. Architects and designers are comfortable using millimeters. Then we scale the screen to the entire workspace. Press Alt W. Create a box with length 5 meters, width 2.5 and, and height 2700. Next, we convert it to editable poly. Click on edges, select these two edges, right click and choose connect edges. Assign two edges and move them away from each other. Then select and detach polygons. Let's get out of the object, the box, and turn the disconnected polygon into the window. Go to Polygons, right click on Inset, and set the indentation for the future frame. And select Detach again. We have two objects now. This plane is the gloss, and the framing is our frame. Add shell to the gloss and set 5 mm to inner and to outer amount. Add shell to inner and to outer amount of the framing as well, but 15 mm on each side. By selecting the box, we click on the upper cover, detach and call it ceiling. The same thing we do with the floor. And isolate it by pressing Alt Q. We see that the plane of the floor is black because it is the internal part of the box. If we apply Floor Generator, our board will be inside out. So, we assign Normal before Floor Generator. Let's increase the length and width of the board. Lower Extrude. Get rid of the cracks by resetting the parameter Grout. Lower Bevel and Outline. Apply Chamfer. Set the amount 2 mm, segment 4 mm, and tension 0.5. Check the smooth chamfers on the box for smoothing. Now we add the bath, and after removing the excess, we set the toilet bowl here. Turn it 90 degrees. Put the bath to its place. Ungroup. Move the mixer, and turn it 90 degrees. Select Alignment and click on the floor. Leave only Z-axis, Kern Object Minimum and Target Object Maximum. It's for the aligning regarding the floor. Select the bathtub with towels, apply FFD and by clicking on the extreme points, move them down for the aligning. Choose Box, turn on Auto Grid and let's create a 2 meter long countertop. Its width will be half a meter and height 50 mm. We move it to the edge right away. Set 800 mm for Z axis below. It will raise our countertop to this height and create a box on its inner side. It will be our column. Convert it into table poly, choose the lower polygon and align it regarding the floor. With shift held down, create a copy. Copy the countertop down and convert it in at a table poly. Create another copy below, it will be our future shelf. Taking the polygon, we raise it up. Let's raise the upper part as well. Select the side polygon and drag it to our column. Click on the point on the left and move it inside too. The front polygon we push deeper. Then we select edges, set three connections. Go to polygons, right click and choose inset. Click on the first button and lower the indentation value. Select polygons, move them forward with shift held down. Here we choose clone as separate object and apply shell. Reset inner mount, raise outer mount. I pressed on 1, it is a hotkey for point selection. Choose the edge and move it inside. The same thing we do with the left part. I press 4 to deepen the shelf. Select all other objects and add them to a group. Apply chamfer 2 mm for segments and 0.5 of tension. Don't forget to check the smooth chamfers on the box. Now I will upload the rest of the models. I add sync and group it right away. The sync is not on the right scale, so we make it bigger and use the aligning. Put it on the countertop. Turn it and on the front view we check its scale. Copy and align it. Create a soap and group it. Next we add basket. Remove the axis. Open group, delete the cloth and close it. Align it, turn it and put on its place. Let's add a line to a scene, we will need it later. We add several accessories. We keep just the toilet paper 
and perhaps cotton swabs. Place them next to the soap and put the toilet paper in the basket using fast aligning. Press Shift A. Copy it placed next to the original and group it. Take just a couple of objects from this model. Group them, turn, align and put on a shelf. Move it and make a copy of towels. I accidentally deleted the light source. Let's upload it again. Put it on its place right away. Center it according to the sink. Lower and copy it. And make one more copy over the bath. Exit the isolation mode. Let's put the camera and go to it by pressing Z. Go to Render Setup. Choose Corona Render. In the Common tab we set the render resolution and lock the aspect ratio. Press Shift F to see the area of the render. Move the camera back. Increase the perspective. Right click on the movement icon and move the toilet bowl with the help of the counters. Let's deal with light sources. We select them and seal in two. Go to isolation mode. Hotkeys are Alt Q. Then press F to go to the front view. Select only light sources and raise the ceiling. Choose cylinder. Turn off auto grid. These are our blanks to create holes for spotlights. Move them crossing the plane. Choose the ceiling, compound objects, draw boolean, pick object and click on each cylinder. The operation didn't work entirely right, because normals are turned the wrong way. But it's easy to fix it. Just pick the lower covers and invert them up. We go inside and see the dark walls. Apply the same normal modifier to them. For ease of navigation, I'll increase the perspective. I'll create a box, convert it into table poly, press hotkey 4. It activates polygons. Select the upper polygon and drag it to the ceiling. Select the lower polygon and raise it just above the tab. Create a plan, it will be our backsplash. Apply floor generator to it. Turn it along the countertop. Length 250, width 90 mm. Let's add a couple more millimeters. Now we split the mirror. Radially select the edges, connect, two divisions, extrude, deepen and close them. The scene is ready for lighting. Let's apply the materials, create Corona MTL. It will be the walls. Almost white material, reflection value is 1 and add some dullness below. Assign the material, select the backsplash, copy the material with shift held down. Double click on the material to enable its settings. Increase reflection and add glossiness. Applied on a tile. Assign first material to the ceiling. In mirror settings we set one in refraction and one in reflection. And apply it on the glass. The next material is a window frame. Set a practically black color, add reflection and make it matte. Apply it on the frame. The following material is for the floor. Corona, Corona bitmap, open texture. Pass it through color correction and apply reflect glossiness. Discolor it, check the advanced box. Raise contrast, change gamma and RGB. Copy color correction with shift held down and make it more contrast. Assign it to bump. Set one in reflection and increase reflection intensity. In maps tab, we lower the glossiness impact. Double click on the texture to display it. Next, we apply unwrap modifier. But before its assignment, it's better to save this in. Let's save it as a new version of the file by clicking on plus. And it's better to assign the modifier before chamfer. Open UV editor, mapping, flatten mapping and OK. Here we choose the texture that will be displayed in the editor. Press F2 to be able to see through the texture. We need to turn the texture so the wood fiber goes along the board. Click on rotation tool, select our polygons and turn them 90 degrees. Choose free transform tool, increase the scale of the polygons. Some boards are not orientated correctly as we see. Right click on it and break. Turn it 90 degrees. Select these two boards, click on break as well and turn them 90 degrees. The next material is a mirror. We set zero value in level. Reflection is one, increase Fresnel. Choose these three polygons and assign mirror on them. Press Ctrl I, it inverts the selection and apply simple gray material on it. We need to create two more materials. We open the folder and drag textures from it. Let's assign diffuse and copy this map with shift held down. And this copy we assign to reflect glossiness. Double click on it and clicking on texture path in settings, 
we choose the map for glossiness. For this blue texture, we click on Bump and choose Corona Normal from the list. Assign the texture to the Normal Map channel. Double click on the top of the material and see issues with smoothness of the sphere. Input gamma of the texture works incorrectly now, so we check the box Add Gamma to Input. Set one in Reflection, increase Fresnel, add a little of translucency. Increase Fresnel some more and lower glossiness impact. Apply material on the contour top. Open group, choose contour top and apply UVW map. Select box and set the value of 2000 per each texture size parameter. Display this texture. The last material is a wood for the commode. Here we have materials for diffuse, displays, bump and specular which we add to glossiness right away. Color texture to diffuse. For bump we apply Corona bump, put the blue texture to normal map. For proper operation of the texture, don't forget to check the box Add Gamma to Input. Add this texture to Additional Map and to Displays. Set 5mm in Displacement. Go to Perspective, select the component parts of the commode, assign the wood and display it on the surface. Then we assign and wrap. We do everything exactly the same. Select polygons, mapping, flatten mapping and OK. Change the scale, press F2 to see through the material. Materials are ready. And now it's time to light up the scene. Open render settings. Just like with the textures, it doesn't matter what we choose for HDRI. We can choose standard bitmap or corona bitmap. There is no big difference. Choose HDRI. Increase the value of override to add more contrast. Drag HDRI to settings, launch interactive render, we see the white plate. This is a wall in front of the camera. Let's delete it. Go to camera clipping, enable it and increase the value of near. The array materials are rendered in red color. Corona doesn't support them in this version. In order to fix that, we go to scripting, run script, go to Corona renderer folder, launch the script and convert all materials and light. Go to HDRI settings, check the enable color map box and raise the point up increasing the amount of light. We can even set the higher value in the counter. Increase highlight compress to lower overexposures. Spotlights doesn't shine, the lights are off. When copying I forgot to select instance. So we delete two of them. When copying it's necessary to select instance. Try not to forget about it. It's one thing if there are three light sources, in other case there can be several dozen of them. Open groups, I see that light sources are upside down. Select one source, edit and select instances. It selects all the instances. Mirror them and lower down. Turn the light on. I made the render window smaller and launched the interactive render. Light sources are visible in reflection, so we turn off visibility in refraction and for other lights. Let's make the light a bit colder and more intensive. It's beginning to emerge a bit, but it's not enough. We increase in it two times and the light instantly became better visible. We want more reflections from the floor. Let's increase Fresnel and lower glossiness map. Choose the toilet bowl material with the help of an eyedropper and make it more matte. Wood on the floor looks good. Create additional cameras for close-ups. To do that, on the top view we copy the camera. This time we choose Copy. Let's put the target closer. Copy it one more time and turn the camera. To speed up the render, don't forget to place portals in window frames. It focuses the light inward the room. Create a plan and apply Corona Portal MTL. Go to the second camera. This is how our clipping works. We don't need it here. Turn it off and look for an interesting angle. Now let's set up depth of field. Select camera and check the use photographic box. Lower f stop value to 4. The lower the value is, the more is blurriness. Activate depth of field, check the override focus box. Object, click on none and select the object you want to focus on. After that, launch the interactive render. Let's find the angle, reduce the perspective and move away from the commode. Make it brighter, increase ISO. The effect begins to appear. 
but to see more of it, let's lower f-stop value. It's too bright this time, so we lower ISO. We can see that this object is in the focusing radius. Foreground and background start to blur. We focus right in the middle. Let's make the second close-up. Go to the third camera. The camera inherited clipping when copying. We turn the clipping off. This is a result without DOF. Let's turn it on. Activate photo exposure. F-stop value is 4. Enable the effect and focus on the mixer. We can also turn on bloom and glare. Increase bloom intensity and add a vignette. We can increase bloom some more. We must increase the resolution before the final render. We can set 5000 pixels. It is a standard for our commercial render. For the fast render, we set this value. In the Scene tab, Noise Level Limit is 4. We turn on the noise, which will remove the remaining noise. Let's add the primary render elements. These will be enough. We add a direct, indirect, reflect and refract render elements. And these two elements we need for quick object selection while post-processing. Before clicking on Render, we need to assign the folder for saving. To do that, we click on Files in Render Output. We choose a folder, name our file and choose OpenEXR as its type. Click Save and in the window that appears, we change nothing. That means we keep the maximum quality. Go to the required camera, don't forget to save your project and hit Render. So, we go to Photoshop for post-processing. Drag our render here. If we want to cut the background outside the window, we select the first option. But I want to keep the background, so I choose as alpha channel. Then I upload direct, which is direct light. We see that some functions are not available. So, we go to image, mode and choose 16 bits. In any case, save it in 32 bits, which is maximum quality. Select the screen blending type. It looks brighter now, but let's make the render element more transparent. Then we add indirect light. Here we add screen as well. And this time we add a mask. Hold Alt and click on mask creation. We take a brush, white color, make a brush more transparent and lower its radius using hotkeys, square brackets or by right clicking. Make this area a bit brighter Add Reflect, Screen Blending, Alt and click on Mask Creation. Increase Brush Scale and add a little reflection to the floor and to the glass. And two maps for creating the masks. I turn off one of them. And go into the lower one. I take the Magic Wand tool and click on the Commode. But I need to exclude the contour top. So I activate the upper render element and click on the contour top with Shift held down. When object selecting, I choose Exposure in Filters, lower Gamma and increase Exposure. It will make the commode more contrast. Next, I want to make towels brighter. Select it, apply Exposure and lower Gamma. Let's compare. In order to combine all layers to one, I press Shift Ctrl Alt E. And then I press Shift Ctrl A to call the camera Row Tool. Make shadows a bit deeper. Raise contrast and clarity. I see the overall violet hue. So we add a little of green. Let's compare before and after. Add a little more of green. We can also add some sharpening. Add vignette. Compare camera row before and after and compare the total difference. Basically that's it. That's the end of the lesson. If you liked it, click on thumbs up. Thank you very much for your attention. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and become professionals with us.